Hello friends. Today in this session we will discuss crack relief layer as provided in flexible pavements or in rigid pavements. You know crack is a major problem that occurs on the pavement. When a pavement surface cracks and it loses its strength, then overlay is provided as a strengthening measure. If the crack in the lower layers are not sealed properly before putting the overlay, then these cracks after some time will start reflecting on the overlay surface and that is called the reflective cracks. So a cracked surface provided with an overlay without any treatment to the cracks, then after some time these cracks will appear on the surface of the overlay and that is called reflection cracks. If sealing of cracks is not an economic solution, then a crack relief layer is provided between the new overlay and the old cracked pavement layer in order to dissipate pavement movements before they create stress in a new overlay surface. Similarly, in the construction of flexible pavement, IRC 37 recommends use of cement treated base. Now the cement treated base is easily cracked under action of wheel load and therefore it is recommended to provide a crack relief layer between the cement treated base and the bitumous layer. So in that case a crack relief layer is provided between the bitumous layer and the cement TCS base to delay the reflection of cracks from CTB layer into the bituminous layer. There are many advantages of providing crack relief layer. One, it insulates the existing layer, thereby decreasing the horizontal movements in the layer. It reduces the horizontal movements transferred from the existing layer to the overlay by breaking or reducing the bond between the overlay and the existing pavement. And three, it absorbs or distributes some of the differential deflection at joints and cracks in the existing pavement. There can be four types of crack relief layer. It can be in the form of a granular layer or it can be a stress absorbing membrane which we call SAM or it can be a stress absorbing membrane interlayer which is called SAMI. These two are more or less similar except that the quantity of the binder and stone chips are slightly different in these two layers otherwise their function their laying procedure is same or it can also be bitumen impregnated geotextile. Granular crack relief layer is generally 100 mm thick layer of aggregates and the grading of aggregates should conform to wet mix macadam as per MORTH specifications 2013. The aggregate should satisfy the requirement of grading as given here and attempt should be to have the final grading which is close to the midpoint of this range. The design of mix is a three step process and the first step is the physical requirement that is testing of aggregate and fines to meet the physical requirement then meeting the parameters of grading that is mixing of aggregates which are available at site to get the desired grading and then compaction parameters optimum moisture content and maximum dry density. The physical tests are conducted on aggregates and fines to determine their suitability in the use of WMM or crack relief layer. The impact value should be less than 30% or the abrasion value should be less than 40% and combined fluckiness and elongation indices should be less than 35%. And the fine material passing 425 micron should have the plasticity index which is less than 6. Once you declare that the aggregates and fines are suitable for use as a crack relief layer, then we carry out the compaction parameter that is determination of optimum moisture content and maximum dry density. And this is done as per IS 2720 part 8 that is heavy compaction. In the proctor test, generally aggregates are taken which are of size less than 22.4 millimeter and therefore when you have size of aggregate larger than 22.4 millimeter then the aggregate fraction which is retained on 22.4 millimeter sieve is replaced by the material of 4.5 millimeter to 22.4 millimeter sieve size. 
water is added in increment of 1% starting from 3% and then we draw the dry density versus moisture content relationship to determine the optimum moisture content and maximum dry density. What IRC 37 suggests that the granular crack relief layer should be compacted to 100% of the modified proctor density in the field. And this layer is considered as part of the structural layer of the pavement. And when you analyze the pavement using IIT PAVE software, then resident modulus value of this layer can be taken as 450 megapascal. When the crack relief layer is in the form of SAM or semi stress absorbing membrane or stress absorbing membrane interlayer, it is constructed in the form of one or two coats of elastomeric rubberized bitumen, which is followed by a covering of aggregate chips. Binder should comply with the requirement of IS15462 or IRC SP53 as per the contract. And stone chips will be angular fragments of clean, hard, tough, durable rock of uniform quality. The size of stone chips will be passing 11.2 mm sieve and retained on 2.36 mm sieve. And they should meet the physical requirement as for any other layer of bituminous mix like cleanliness, particle shape in the form of fleckiness index and elongation index, strength, abrasion value or impact value, then durability in the form of soundness test, water absorption and stripping. All these tests must be conducted on aggregate before using in the SAM or SAMI layer. If required by the contract, aggregates can be pre-coated by mixing them with 0.75 to 1% of paving bitumen by weight of chips in a suitable mixture. And these pre-coated aggregates should be allowed to cure for at least one week or until they become non-sticky so that they can be spread easily. The rate of application of the binder and the chips depends upon the type and width of the crack in the old layer. And MORTH specification 2013 suggests these guidelines for application of quantity of binder and quantity of stone chips for different types of and width of cracks. For hair cracks and map cracks up to the width of 3 mm, a single coat of SAM or second coat of two coat SAM can be laid and the quantity of binder will be 8 to 10 kg per 10 meter square and stone chips will be 0.1 meter cube of 5.6 millimeter size. Similarly, for map cracks or alligator cracks having width 3 millimeter to 6 millimeter and 6 millimeter to 9 millimeter, in this case, two coat of SAM is suggested. First coat will have the quantity of binder 12 to 14 kg per 10 meter square and the second coat will have 8 to 10 kg per 10 meter square. And the size and quantity of the stone chips. Similarly, for cracks above 9 mm width and when the cracked area is more than 50%, then we use two coat of SAM and the first coat and second coat are provided as per this table. But when you are using SAMI, that is stress absorbing membrane interlayer, this is laid only in single coat for all cracks of width below 6 mm, the quantity of binder is 8 to 10 kg per 10 meter square and the quantity of stone chips is 0.1 meter cube. And if the crack is more than 6 mm wide, then the quantity of binder and the quantity of stone chips will be as per this recommendation. When two coat SAM is required, then the second coat should be laid within 90 days of the first coat. IRC 37 2018 suggests use of semi layer above the cement treated base. And it also says that in case of semi layer, elastomeric modified binder should be used at the rate of 10 to 12 kg per 10 meter square area and it should be covered with 0.1 meter cube of 11.2 millimeter aggregate size. Bitumen impregnated jet textiles. It, the geotextile should conform to the requirement as given in the contract or as per MORTH specification 2013 
and the binder quantity for impregnated geotextile shall be 0 0.9 to 1.2 liter per meter square. The construction operations. The first operation for all types of track leaf layer is prepare the base. That means clean the surface thoroughly either by using the mechanical brush or maybe some other equipment or method. Dust must be blown off using a compressor. In the case of granular layer, further construction steps are same as we adopt for any granular base layer like wet mix macadam. In the case of crack relief layer of the material other than aggregate alone, the next step is application of binder. The equipment and general procedure of application of binder shall be as per the manual for construction of bitmus mixes. The application temperature for modified binder shall be 160 to 170 degrees centigrade and the quantity of binder for SAM or SAMI layer will be as per type and width of the track. The binder used to impregnate the fabric and bond the fabric the pavement will be of VG10 and the binder quantity for geotextile shall be 0.9 to 1.2 liter per meter square. We first apply the tack coat on the existing surface and then place the geotextile onto the tack coat using mechanical or manual lay down equipment. But geotextile must be placed before cooling of the tack coat. After laying the geotextile, it is desired that some loose bituminous material shall be sprinkled on it in the wheel path of the paver and the tipper to ensure that the fabric is not picked up between the wheels. When SAM layer or semi layer is used then after application of the binder next stage is application of aggregates so you spread the clean and dry aggregates in required quantity immediately after application of the modified binder the surface of the sam or semi shall be swept to ensure uniform spread of aggregates and that there are no loose chips on the surface when two coat sam is required the second coat should be laid within 90 days of the first coat the traffic may be opened over semi layer 2 hours after rolling but speed should be limited to 20 km per hour. In case of impregnated geotextile layer, traffic shall not be allowed unless it is overlaid by another layer. So thank you very much for watching this video. That is how a crack relief layer is provided in field.